Hey everyone and welcome to another Unreal Tips and Tricks video, where today we'll be looking into light map bleeding. Light bleeding usually occurs when using baked lighting and visible between wall seams or when a mesh has incorrect light map UV information. In this video, I will show you the different steps to solve light bleeding and get the best lighting results inside of Unreal. In this tutorial, we will be using Revit to show you how to correctly prepare your assets before exporting your data in order to avoid any light baking issues. Here is a useful checklist before exporting our data. Make sure to connect wall tops to ceilings to avoid any gaps between the meshes. Set wall joints to miter. And finally, avoid any thin geometry for your walls. Use split faces and give some thickness to your wall to avoid any light bleeding. This is our scene setup in Unreal. I've used Datasmith to import my building from Revit and added a directional light and HDRI background to light up my scene. In this first part of the series, we'll look at how to correctly set up your scene for baked lighting and use various techniques within the engine to solve light map bleeding. A few steps to start and avoid any light bleeding is by helping Unreal which area to determine my light map calculation by setting up a light mass importance volume. What the light mass importance volume does is control the area that light mass emits photons in, allowing you to concentrate it only on the area that needs detailed indirect lighting. So in this case, we want to concentrate the photons inside of this house. So let's go ahead and in our top left, in our search classes, search for light mass importance volume and drag the actor on the scene. So what you need to do here is make the actor here represented by this box, the size of the house. So let's go ahead and scale it on the X axis here and do the same on the Y axis. And actually for better visualization, let's go to our top view here. So Let's enable the top and let's enable unlit mode. We can see that our box is the size of the building, which is very good. Now let's drop back to our perspective mode and we can see that the box needs scaling up on the Z axis. So I'm going to go ahead here and press R on my keyboard and scale that up on the Z axis and Let's make it just so it reaches the ceiling. So we have the size of the light mass importance volume. Now it's time to set up the light mass portals. All right, second tip to enhance your lighting and avoid light bleeding is by placing light mass portals on each window opening. So go to search classes and type in light mass portal and there you go just drag that actor onto the scene and just like our previous setup what we have to do here is scale it to the appropriate size of where the lighting is going to be important so in instance here it's going to be on each window opening and i'm just going to scale it up again by pressing r on my keyboard i can scale the object Let's make sure that our light mass portal is covering the entire window bay and let's duplicate the object by keeping Alt key pressed and dragging up our actor here. And let's do the same process as we did on the first floor. Once you have finished placing the light mass portals on each opening, this is going to tell light mass that more light waves should come from this area, enabling higher quality lights and shadows. We're going to go ahead and build the lighting. But first, I want to make sure we're on preview settings. So go into the drop down menu and go to lighting quality and make sure to set preview for now. Right, here we are after our first light baking 
And we have a warning message in the log telling us that one of our meshes has overlapping UVs by more than 80%. So let's go and check that out. Now, I know which mesh is causing the issue in the scene, but sometimes it may be hard to track which one. An easy way to track the object is by clicking on the message, and this will bring you to the Assets folder. Right click and go to Asset Actions, select actors using this asset, and this is going to highlight the actor for you. So press F on the keyboard, and that is going to focus on the selected actor. The error we are seeing here can happen when an object has bad UV light map information. With the asset selected, go into details panel and double click on the thumbnail. This is going to bring us to the mesh editor window. Go to the UV bar and let's check our UVs here. We need to check our channel number two, since this is our automatically generated light map done with our export. Our UV channel two seems to be set up correctly, but let's check if our asset is using the correct light map destination. Go into the search details tab on the right and type light map coordinate index. And we can see here it is using number one. So let's go and check number one. And what we see here is some overlapping UVs that must have been set up for our textures. But for light map, we need separate islands and we need to use number two. I'm going to set up the light map coordinate index to two and press enter. Save the assets and quit the mesh editor window. And here we can see that we have to rebuild our lighting. So let's go ahead and check if we have solved our light map bleeding. And this is our result after light baking. So as you can see, no more error messages stating that we have overlapping UVs. Light mass is working as it's supposed to. Now let's enhance our lighting further. To get better lighting and shadows in our scene, we need to increase our overall light map resolution on our static meshes. You can visualize light map density by going to the view modes tab and drop down to optimization view mode and enable light map density. Light map density mode displays the light map density of objects that are texture mapped color coding them by the relation to an ideal density setting and displaying a grid that maps to the actual light map texels. It is important to have an even texel density across your scene to get consistent light map lighting. I'm going to switch to my lit mode and as you can see we have some decent values in the interior. Let's check the exterior. So the exterior lighting doesn't seem too bad, though I noticed that we have some heavy light bleeding going on the structure here. So I'm going to enable my light map density view mode again, and I can do that by pressing Alt 0 on my keyboard. What we can see here is that this structure is using a low res texel density for the light map. We're going to go ahead and bump that up. So the way to do that is by clicking on the mesh and going in the details panel here on the right. And if you scroll down, you can override the light map resolution here. Right now we're using a value of 1 to 8. So I'm going to go and increase that to 512 and uh, press escape to display the correct color and it's still blue, so we're gonna bump that up again and always use a power of two. So I'm going to go ahead and go 2048. It's yellow, it's not too bad, but we can increase that furthermore. All right, a value of 496 here is pretty good for our structure. Before we move on to the light building, I would like to mention that the values that I'm using here are for AEC purpose 
and may not be suited for games. Increasing the light map resolution may help fix light bleeding, but at the cost of a higher memory usage and higher light calculation time. Okay, now that said, let's go ahead and build our lighting. After a few minutes of light calculation, I'm already seeing a much better defined shadow on this arc. If we compare the two images side by side, we clearly see that increasing our light map resolution solved our issue in this particular scenario. In the next series, we are going to cover light mass settings for our final light calculation. Thank you.